Hi there, thank you for visiting Ladies in Tech again. Before you go, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything, okay? Make sure you subscribe, thank you. Hi, and thank you for joining me again. This video is gonna be on relay timers. So we're gonna talk about what is a relay timer, and then from there, we're gonna talk about using it in a RS Logix 500 program uh, using the timer function. So first we have to understand how a relay timer works, and then we will put it into some programming. So timing relays uh, has a device that delays the immediate activation or deactivation of an armature when power is applied to it or removed from the relay. So if we go back to relay logic, we know that we have this relay, we have a coil. When we energize the coil, it has all these little contacts that will either go closed or go open. So they'll go to the opposite position than what they are, okay? So now with timing relays, instead of that action of those contacts inside of that relay happening right away, it actually either delays coming on or coming off. So the older units, that were used for timing relays use pneumatics and fluid cylinders or gear or motor arrangements. So those are your, uh, like a watch, right? So it actually do the timing that way. New styles use electronics, RC networks to generate the delay. And with ladder logic, we're gonna use the instructor instructions with the timing, timer instruction. And that's how we're gonna create our delay. Now timing relays contacts are specified by the style of contact. You have your normally open and your normally closed. And here's some pictures here of your normally open, normally closed. You can see in its normal position, this contact is closed. And this one here in its normal position, the contact is closed. Then we also specified by the operation, timing closed or timing open. So we're gonna talk about the timing open and timing close and the direction of this arrow here will help us indicate which direction the timing function is going to happen. And down here when we draw our electrical drawings we can also show it like this. Um, this is the drawing for this one above. So it's a normally closed it's marked by this and it's a, a timer on and this one here normally closed on delay timer closed. So when we're writing our program we have to give a little bit of a description because it's hard to know exactly what type of relay that is just by kind of looking at the the instruction itself. So it's good to do a nice description when you're um, when you're creating those instructions and putting those contacts in there so that the operator knows how that relay actually times. So let's talk about a normally open times closed. So this is a symbol for a normally open times closed. You can see that the switch, or I should say the contact, is shown open, so it's open position. All right. The direction of the contact's motion is identical to a regular normally open contact, but there is a delay in the closing of the contact. So when we look at this picture and we see this come down like this and then you got an arrow pointing up, that is the direction of the delay that's going to happen. So when I look at this, it means that five seconds and then it's going to close. So it's going to, the contact's going to move up. So contacts are open. So when we don't have energy at the coil, the contacts are open. And when the en coils become energized, it takes five seconds and that will close. This contact type is also known as a normally open on delay. So we're going to look at the operation and the actual logic levels and the contact status as we go through and look at closing these switches. So we have a small circuit here, we got L1 and L2, so on this side we have our positive and we have our negative. We have a switch, this is just a you know, regular little switch here, it could be a limit switch. And you can see right now it's open, when it's open. L1 does not allow power through to, here is our coil on our relay. Our relay is C1. And here we got a description that tells us that C1 is an on delay five second timing relay. 
So over here, we got the coil power and we have the contact status. So here we can either be on or off for the coil power and down here our status can either be open or closed. So we'll look at this. In this direction here is going to be our time. So at this point in time, the coil power is off and the contact status is open. You can see right here, it's open. This here has no power going to the coil. Okay, so now when we close that switch, now we have power to the coil. You can see it jump up like this and go on. And still at that point in time, the contact status is still open. When the five second delay is complete, after five seconds, you can see now that contact status is closed down here, it's closed, and this little symbol here is a light, it comes on. Now with that coil power here, if we open that switch, it de-energizes our coil, and at the exact same time, the contact status goes open. So showing the full function there of the normally open times closed. So when we energize the coil, the contact will close five seconds after the coil's been energized, but when we de-energize the coil, the C1 contact will open right away. Now we've got a normally open timed open. Here's a symbol for the normally open timed open. This type of contact is normally open when the coil is de-energized and closed by the application of power to the relay coil. The timing action occurs upon de-energization of the coil, rather upon energization. Okay. Alternatively known as a normally open off delay. Now let's look at its functionality. This drawing here, we have our switch again, and here's our coil, C1 coil. And this time it is an off delay. Very important that we know that it is an off delay, and it needs to be noted so we know how it how this coil and contact will react. And I want you to look at here, you can see the arrow pointing down. So that tells me that when the timing operation is completed, it will come down. So in this first little um, bit here, we have the coil is de-energized. So if we go to our, our graph over here, so we show our coil power as off which means our contact status is going to be off at that point in time. When we close the switch and we energize our contact, you can see here, that's at this point in time, at this very same time, our contact for C1 closes. You can see there, it's all closed. But when we open up S1, and this becomes de-energized, sorry this should be white instead of green, so it becomes de-energized, it starts counting. So at this point in time, you can see the coil power went to off, and now the timing sequence begins. And it's still closed until five seconds have completed, then that contact drops open, and the light shuts off. So with our normally open, timed open, the, the coil becomes energized, the contact closes right away, but when the coil becomes de-energized, the counting begins for five seconds and then the contact opens up. Now let's look, now let's look at normally closed timed open. So we can see here, uh, we have a new symbol. So this is our normally closed, so in its normal position, it is closed and then you can see the arrow, the direction is pointing up. Right here, it's pointing up. So when the timing function is complete, it will open. So the contact is normally closed when the coil is de-energized. Contact is open after the coil has been continually powered for a specific amount of time. So what happens is, when that coil becomes energized, this contact will wait five seconds and then will become open. 
This is also known as a normally closed on delay. Now looking down here at the status graph here with the coil power compared to the contact status, with the coil power off, the contact status will be closed. Its normal position is closed. But as soon as the coil power is turned on, the timer starts counting, and five seconds after, the contact status becomes open. And it will remain open until the coil power has been removed, and then the contact will close again. So that's your normally closed time to open. Now let's look at your normally closed time closed. So we'll look at the symbol here. You can see again it's in its normal position because when I draw my symbols, they're in their normal position. The contact is closed and the arrow is pointing down. So once the timing is going to be complete, we know that the contacts can become closed. Contact is normally closed before the coil is energized and opened by the application of power to the relay coil. The timing action occurs upon de-energization of the coil. So if we look at the graph for this contact, we can see when the contact power is off, right? and here's our contact status since it's normally closed, it will be closed. As soon as the coil power is on, the contact will drop open. Once the coil power is removed, the timer will start counting for five seconds. Once that five seconds is complete, the contact will go back to closed position. This contact is also alternatively known as a normally closed off delay. Now let's look at our MicroLogix timers. And this is true for a lot of the timers that are in RSLogix 500. This is the instruction here. It's a TON. This is a uh, a on timer. Now on the timing block it contains the timers number so each timer should have its own number but in some uh, situations you will uh, perhaps time with the same number every time. Uh, we got our time base and this instance is one so that time base tells me that it's it's counting in seconds. You can change your time base to say milliseconds if you wanted to or tenth of a second so that time base can change. We have our preset and your preset is your value that you want your timer to time to. And your accumulated is your accumulated value. So that means that how much it actually has timed up until that point. The preset value can be programmed with any value from 0 to 32,767. I want to talk a little bit about the formatting of the naming of the timer. The file structure for a MicroLogix and majority of the controllers that you use with MicroLogix, uh, with RSLogix 500, is going to always be T, is going to be the file type. Is T is always for timers and so is 4. So it's always going to be under file number 4 and then you have your name of your timer. These type of timers are non-retentative. When the logic to the timer is low, its accumulated value will be set to 0. So your timer is an output. So you're going to have some logic, usually on the front of here, to tell the timer when it, to begin, when it is to begin to time. As soon as the logic in front of it becomes low, your accumulated value automatically sets back to zero. So it does not retain any of that accumulated time. So hence that makes it non-retentive. Some bits that we have on our timer that we can use in our logic is our, here's our enable bit. That enable bit is true whenever the logic path in front of the timer is true. The done bit here is only true when the preset and the accumulated value are the same. So that's telling me when I set that preset to 10 seconds in this example, when the accumulated value, so it actually timed up to 10 seconds, the timer becomes done. And then also your file 4 is a default data table for timers. And here is the data table that you would find in our Logix 500 for this timer. Uh, the first word is going to be, it's going to store the information for the enable bit, the timer timing bit. The timer timing bit will be true whenever the timer is timer. 
and then we got our done bit is also stored. The second word is going to store the preset value, and the third word is going to store the accumulated value of that timer. Now we do have the option of return of timers, and they're an RTO instruction, and these timers actually do not reset when the logic in front of them has been removed. They're very similar to the other timers. You can see they have all the same information inside, except for that accumulated value will not go back to zero if the logic in front is false. The only way to reset the RTO timers is to actually use the reset command. So if I colon 0 12 slash 0 2 becomes true, it will reset that timer. You can see the address here, T4 colon 2, is the timer address here, and it will set that accumulated value back to zero. All right, and that's about all I have right now for timers for you. I'm going to be 